Hey, welcome back. It's been a really long time since I posted a new video. And part of the reason I made this one is because my third block at the high school where I teach found out I had a YouTube channel. As you can tell, things have been changing in the shop. I got rid of the long old workbench that came with the house when I bought it. And I replaced it with this five foot long rolling one. But that's not the project this week. What I want to show you is over here. In about a month, I'm doing a craft show at a local elementary school, and I, in the past I've always been short on table space. So I finally decided it's time to build one of these, a collapsible set of shelves. The uprights hinged together, and then I just laid some plywood on top of it. Let me show you how I got started. I got a lot of painted lumber for free from my dad, who got it from a neighbor who overestimated how much they needed for a project. This really cut down on the cost of these shelves. Originally, I was going to rip a lot of 2 inch strips from a 1x12, but since this wood was free, I decided 1 and 3 quarter inch wide boards would do just fine. These boards started out as 8 and 10 feet long, but I cut them down at the miter saw to make them more manageable at the table saw. I had the blade set up to rip them right down the middle. Next it was time to cut the wood to lengthen the miter saw. I needed a lot of the short horizontal pieces and I ended up cutting even more than required. That's okay, it gave me a chance to pick the best ones. I know, I know, pocket hole joinery and the Craig jig in particular can be a hot button issue, but you can't deny it's quick and easy and honestly, these joints don't have to be that strong. Nobody's going to be climbing on these shelves. With all the pieces cut and drilled, it's time to start screwing them together. I'm using a bar clamp to hold the two pieces flat down to the work table. And then I'll use this Craig jig to clamp them to each other. Now I just need to pop a screw in there. Then I can take this clamp off, put a screw in the other hole. Repeat that process about nine more times and this one will be done. That's three down, one more to go. Well, I gave him a quick sanding with 150 and 220, and I just got done rounding over all the edges. Next up is to make some small mortises to hinge them together. I can remove most of the material with the router, staying inside the line, knowing that I'll come back with a chisel to clean it up and cut in the corners. Some people prefer to do this with just a chisel, but I like how the router makes quick work of it. thing left to do is to cut some shelves out of a sheet of plywood and these will be done. I made my circular saw guides more than a year ago and have used them to cut up a lot of sheet goods since. They make it easy to get a straight clean cut and to get smaller pieces to take to a table saw. The one thing you might watch out for is that the jig is square to the wood. I like to use a framing square to check this at either end of the guide before I clamp it down and make the cut. All 
All right, well, let's go wrap up this week's project. And I tell you, it feels good to get back in the shop. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have a great weekend, and as always, get out there and make some sawdust.